That's right, Darren Waller officially placed on the reserve retired list, officially informed the Giants yesterday through his agent, Drew Rose, announced that he was, in fact, retiring. Uh, really explained some very serious issues on his YouTube page, uh, near-death experience last year. There's a lot that went into retirement. I suggest you go watch it. The main thing, football-wise, is that we have seen the last of Darren Waller in the NFL. Tight end Darren Waller just announced that he's retiring from the NFL after spending one season with the Giants and Daniel Jones. In all seriousness though, Darren Waller announced his retirement this past week after spending a few seasons in the NFL at one point was considered the best tight end in the NFL, but after that season, things just started to go downhill dealing with injuries, different quarterbacks, different schemes, not the right situation, being traded, and all of it just kind of went away after that one season. Last offseason, Darren Waller was traded from the Raiders to the New York Giants for a third round pick and this was around the time where Josh McDaniels was the Raiders head coach. So of course he was fucking up and it seemed like this was a stupid move but as it turns out, the Raiders kind of maybe lucked out of it. They didn't lose too much but they also didn't gain that much. The Raiders said that they traded Darren Waller because they were tired of him missing games and which that's understandable and I believe that and it also made sense because the Giants just dealt with that same thing. He just played only 12 games this past season which is still a decent amount of games that the NFL players are going to get injured and hurt but the Raiders dealt with it for a few years. And before the video continues, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more daily NFL content because 97% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed so help out the channel like comment notifications on subscribe do all that good stuff all right let's get back to the video in this trade the giants sent the 100th overall pick which they got from the kansas city chiefs when they traded Kadarius tony to them so essentially the giants traded Kadarius tony for darren waller and at the time of this trade it seemed like the giants just got a steal they got rid of a wash of a player of Kadarius tony for a third round pick and used that third round pick to get one of the best tight ends in the nfl when he's playing when he's healthy when he's in the right situation and circumstances and the raiders drafted wide receiver trey tucker with a 100th overall pick which they got from the giants who got that from the chiefs and tucker this past season had 19 catches 330 yards and two touchdowns so an okay season not the best not the worst he contributed a little bit they got some value out of that trade maybe they can get some more moving forward but if you went back to last season and you would have said the giants traded Kadarius tony and essentially got darren waller back you would have thought that the giants won that trade they added him to a team that had just made the playoffs daniel jones looked good he just got his big contract they gave him another weapon they drafted wandale robinson another weapon they also had saquon barkley so the giants are trying to get back to the playoffs in 2023 and having a good tight end is a cheat code when you look around the league some of the teams that have the best tight ends in the nfl Look at the four teams who are in the championship games. The Ravens had Mark Andrews. I know he didn't play a lot, but a good tight end. Chiefs had Kelsey. Niners had Kittle. And the Lions had Sam Laporta. Teams that have good tight ends are a cheat code because linebackers can't cover them. And safeties have a hard time covering them. Getting a good tight end is a cheat code. Having a good tight end is better than having a good wide receiver. And with the mind of Brian Dable, an offensive mastermind who got the Giants to the playoffs the previous season, it seemed like he was going to get the most out of Waller if he played, if Daniel Jones could get him the ball and, and replicate what he did in 2022. But his first season with the Giants did not go how it was expected. Some of this was due to his own injuries, some of it was due to the quarterback issues having to play with Tommy DeVito, Daniel Jones, and a few other players I don't even know the names of. But he did play in 12 games, had 52 catches, 500 yards, and one touchdown. So not the great season, not a terrible season, but definitely low for the expectations and standards that Darren Waller probably had set upon himself and, and that NFL and the fans had set for him. For a normal tight end, this would be good, but for Darren Waller, who had a lot of expectations and standards, this was very disappointing. But not only was his first season with the Giants disappointing, but this whole offseason for him in general has been disappointing and rough. A few months ago, it was reported that his wife Kelsey Plum, I believe who is a WNBA player, they ended up getting divorced. I don't know the full details, but she put stuff on her story, but basically they ended up getting divorced. I don't know the whole story behind it. And then Darren Waller announced in January that he was going to make music moving forward to start a music career as a rapper. And after the divorce stuff happened, he dropped a music video and a song kind of talking about it. 
in a way the opening scene is him getting backstabbed by a fake kelsey plum i hope i'm saying her name right so maybe he's hinting at something i don't know but there is also some very concerning tiktok videos of him like just doing weird stuff some people were thinking that he had cte and maybe he was just kind of going crazy daniel jones drove him insane And during the season last year, Darren Waller said he thought that he was dying during the season. And that was also part of the reason he retired. He said, I kept nodding and I couldn't breathe, so I ended up calling 911. I'm there breathing deeply, and in between each breath, I'm yelling out help. So, so I, maybe I could wake the neighbors up. I don't know how long the time was. It felt like forever, and I'm like, damn, I'm dying on this couch and nobody knows. It was kind of similar to my overdose, like the power plug being pulled out, and I couldn't breathe anymore. Clear, I almost just lost my life. And um, I don't know if I really feel like if I would have died that I would have felt great about how my life was going if I died at the time. Um, I'm doing something that I found a lot of joy in and have had amazing moments with. Um, but the, the, the passion has slowly been fading. I've, uh, you know, made the decision that I'll be retiring from the NFL, um, you know, there's eternally grateful for the game of football. I wouldn't be able to have this conversation or to think things through or be self-reflective if it wasn't for an opportunity to save my life and go to rehab, which the NFL offered me. They also gave me an opportunity to, you know, reestablish myself to, you know, uh, come back into the world and um, do something productive, um, provide an example, be a leader, be a difference maker, um, you know, in my craft, but also just in the day to day, wherever I go. I mean, all the teams I play for Baltimore taking a chance on me with all the red flags that I even had coming out of college with and can't say enough about the Raiders, Oakland and Las Vegas. Uh, thank you to the Giants. Um, grateful for all the guys there, all the coaches there. I love y'all. Appreciate you. Uh, and that's all I got. That's just really unfortunate if that's true. I hope hopefully he can figure everything out health wise and he can get back to where he needs to be. And hopefully maybe the divorce thing with Kelsey Plum doesn't have anything to do with maybe Darren Waller having some health issues. I know I'm pretty sure he's had issues with drugs and alcohol. Hopefully that stuff isn't related. If he has CTE, hopefully that's not the reason they split up. I don't know the full details. Hopefully just everything works out the way it's supposed to. And based off of just everything that was going on in general, it just seemed like Waller was just disinterested in football, focusing on music, had some personal stuff going on in his life, maybe mentally he wasn't in the right place. And this led the Giants to believe that they were going to be expecting embracing for a retirement announcement from Darren Waller. That report came out about two weeks ago. And not only was this a report that came out two weeks ago, but the Giants were also bracing for maybe this situation a few months ago when they drafted Titan Theo Johnson. But we'll get to that later on in the video. After this report that the Giants were bracing for a Darren Waller retirement, he dropped a video, maybe a music video, talking about the report and his divorce. And the whole thing's odd. I don't want to play the whole thing. It's just a whole very weird situation. It's all good when you got all them yards receiving to them cars you're reading ain't that great. I guess this is what playing with Daniel Jones for one season does to a man. He drove Darren Waller insane, made Kadarius Tony and Kenny Galladay suck. The things Daniel Jones does to a man. In all seriousness though, I do hope Darren Waller is okay and that these videos are just him being funny weird and not like concerning weird. Hope his music career goes the way he wants it to. I hope he has a tremendous career and whatever he's going to end up doing moving forward, which it seems to be like he's going to be doing music. And if he does have some health concerns, I hope he gets help for that as well. But Darren Waller announces his retirement from the NFL after some concerning videos. His offseason has been kind of rough. Spent one season with the Giants, had some issues with the Raiders at the end of his tenure with them. Things have just kind of gone downhill over the last few years for Darren Waller. 
As for the Giants, they have some insurance at the tight end position and they are not just left out completely out to dry. They drafted Theo Johnson, a rookie tight end, this year in the draft in the fourth round. A good rookie prospect. He was someone I wanted my team to draft the Saints. I think he's someone who can have success with Brian Dable. Can Daniel Jones get him the ball? I think he's a good overall tight end, a good blocker, a guy who can get yards after the catch and make good, tough catches. It's just a matter of can they get him the ball? Can he adapt to the NFL fast? Can he learn the playbook? Can he become a number one guy? And not only do they have Theo Johnson as a weapon or insurance for the tight end spot, but they also drafted Malik Neighbors now, who has the really good potential to be a number one guy. They have a video of Daniel Jones didn't throw the pass, ironically. Drew Locke threw the pass to Malik Neighbors in this video. It's a great pass, but Malik Neighbors makes an excellent catch here. There's also been some pretty other good clips of Neighbors making some plays during OTAs and minicamp. So I am excited to see what Malik Neighbors can do. We do have a video of Malik Neighbors having a funny, eventful start in the NFL. Like when he showed up to the Giants facility, he kind of trashed the Giants throwback new uniforms. He didn't even know Daniel Jones' name. He called him Daniel Jones. So we have that video coming out in about a week or so. The Giants also, on top of having Theo Johnson and Malik Neighbors, the rookies, Wando Robinson is someone who I like a lot. I have a signed college photo of him like right here. I think Isaiah Hodgins is still on the team. I don't know the running back situation for me the biggest concern with the Giants is the offensive line I think they have a good head coach I think they have decent ish weapons I think neighbors can be good I think Theo Johnson can be good Wando Robinson Hodgins if he is there can be a good player I think the offensive lines are the biggest issue and of course fixing up the defense I think they have a good front unit but they need to get better in the secondary in the linebacker group but I do think they are far away from being contenders and I think a huge part of that is because they're paying Daniel Jones a below mid quarterback almost 200 million I know he has like 160 million guaranteed to me their biggest issue is quarterback and offensive line they have the coaches I think he can make the weapons work I think the defense can with the right situation maybe be okay to me, it's the quarterback in the offensive line, but I guess we'll have to see how all that turns out. I don't think Darren Waller retiring is as big as an issue as it maybe would have been if this happened this time last season for the Giants. I think Theo Johnson is a good insurance guy. I think he can get 52 catches for 500 yards and a touchdown. I think he can replicate what Darren Waller did last season. And if a rookie replicates what he did, it's different when a rookie does it compared to an NFL veteran who has high expectations and standards. Time will tell. I mean, the countdown for the NFL season is almost here. We have about 90-ish days, less. That's about three months. So, time will tell. Hopefully, Darren Waller and his family, whatever's going on, everything figures itself out, and he has a successful career and life outside of football. Subscribe to my channel for more daily NFL content. Have a good one. Peace.